To improve preparedness, Queen Anne's County has been running a series of exercises simulating hurricanes and other emergency situations with the county departments and the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. Would you like to share with us some of the things we've learned this morning or some of the places where you think we have uh, opportunities to improve? Well, I think this exercise has demonstrated the significant amount of cooperative effort between law enforcement, EMS, public safety, as well as our volunteer fire departments. And it shows that we are a collaborative effort in working together to mitigate any emergency for the citizens of Queen Anne County. So, Greg, we're being proactive from a county employee perspective right. to try and train and educate our employees in specific buildings. Is there anything else you see that's really important that's coming out of this morning? I think the uh, just the different viewpoints that the different agencies have. You know, fire looks at it one way, police another way, uh, dispatch another way. So I think, I think that's, if anything I've learned today, that's, you know, it's, it's just because we assume that everyone knows what, when something's happening on the public safety side, they don't. So it's being able to communicate well. And that seems to be the really the main focus of this morning is communication. How do we make sure everyone knows what's going on as much as possible? One of the most uh, important aspects of being an elected office is the safety, health, and welfare of your citizens. And that includes, uh, in this particular instance, uh, our people that might be uh, in the Liberty Building. Uh, Public health is all about prevention. Uh, in order to maximize prevention, you have to be prepared. And these training exercises are really valuable of bringing all the components, EMS, uh, police, employees, together and uh, sharing thoughts about how we can be much better in the response of some horrible situation. Okay, so Scott, can you tell me why you think this training is important? It gives the agencies time to interact with one another. Typically, when we respond to emergencies, law enforcement works independently, the fire service works independently. We don't always work together on, on the same scenario. So this gives everybody a chance to, to uh, work the scenario out before we actually do an emergency. It's also a good idea to just let everybody think outside the box without the pressure of actually being in the situation. Yes, yes. It gives us time to pre-plan. It gives us time to exercise the plan that we currently have right. and make sure all the plans mesh together. In this particular incident, we're focused on an active assailant. And so one of the things that HR has done for us recently is provided us as employees, not as the first responders or emergency services, uh, an opportunity to learn how we might respond. Beverly, do you want to share about that training? Sure. We, we provided training for the employees through a program from Homeland Security, and this is based on uh, run, hide, and fight. And and it's a video accompanied by a brochure that the employees can take. They can take it home. They can use it with their families. But most importantly, they can use it here at work. And hopefully nothing will happen. But if it does, they are prepared. Right. And one of the things that's really important is employees don't necessarily think the same way. Just general employees don't necessarily think the same way as maybe our emergency services people do or our fire and emergency people when they're responding. So educating the employees on how to react is really key. Right. They don't always know what to do in case of emergency other than dial 911. Uh, so this gives them a little bit of information on what to do in case of an emergency right. in their building. So exit plans and exit strategies from all the various county office buildings is going to be important because each of the buildings is unique. Yes. Every building is laid out differently. How they get out of the building, what they do in their offices, it's all very different. And we're also developing a county policy. Yes, an emergency action plan for um, countywide. And then, of course, it'll be specific as far as how they exit the buildings uh, for each building. We talked to Scott Wheatley about some of the lessons learned at the training event. So one of the discrepancies we're discovering, and it's not as much a discrepancy as a challenge to train better, is some of the language barriers that law enforcement uses versus the combination of emergency services where we have fire and EMS combined into one system. So one of the training objectives we're going to look at is how we can better understand each other's language and get on the same wavelength, especially when it comes to implementing an incident command system. We have to make sure that we understand each other's language 
imagine that we're moving at the same pattern. The last thing we want during one of these catastrophic events is that the system's not working together. We want to make sure we work at once. So one of the objectives we're going to work on from here out is looking at each other's uh, language and making sure that we understand when these situations occur, that we're moving to the same language and using that ICS to benefit the system. To learn more about what you can do to prepare for a major emergency, visit the Department of Emergency Services page on the QAC.org website. I'm Mallory Drummond and thanks for watching.